Welcome to the Locked On Wizards podcast, and it's your host, Ed Oliver, and my guy, Deolante Daniels. The Wizards got a dub tonight against the Detroit Pistons. Denny Avdia with a career high in rebounds, 15 boards and a double-double. This was a night where the young guys got to develop. The Pistons have a lot of young guys. The Wizards have a lot of young guys. Unfortunately, Rui Hachimura suffered an injury. We're going to talk a little bit about that, talk about Denny's performance, and, of course, the roster as a whole. Um, and then there was a little nugget about the about Christos Porzingis and the Raptors were intrigued and wanted to get him as well, but they decided not to because of some of his injury history. So we do want to get into that, but of course we're going to talk about and dissect this win and how the young guys got to develop tonight. Let's get to it. <laughs> You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I just want to thank you guys for making Locked On Wizards your first listen every day. Make sure you guys subscribe to Locked On Wizards and Locked On NBA. Make sure it's your first listen every day. Make sure you guys like to uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and wherever you can find a podcast. All right. So, D, what were your thoughts about the dub today? It was a game that, you know, you look at it, you can say the Wizards should have won, even with the Wizards missing, missing KP and Bradley Bill. The Pistons are still one of the worst teams, not – if you can say a good argument that they're the worst team in the NBA right now, uh, they just have they're just a young rebuilding team, a lot of young pieces. So the Wizards took care of business, especially if they want to fight for that playing spot. They're tied with the Hawks now for the Tim seed. So if they want to continue to fight, this is a game that I'm sure they felt like they should have won, and they did. Uh, Denny Avdi is the main guy I'm looking at, really. 15 rebounds, a career high. It was very impressive what he did on the boards, man. Um, he was he was out there snagging. He was out there snagging. We had Kyle Kuzma before, have a 20-rebound game, and now we have Denny with the double-double, contributing offensively with the 12 points, 4 for 9 from the field, 3 for 4 from the free throw line, 1 for 3 from 3, and also on the boards, man. 15 rebounds, that's big. I'm sure a lot of his fans are happy about that. It is good. 31 minutes. That's good production. 31 minutes, man. It's a big uptick from those 15-minute games, 18-minute games, etc. that he was getting. It feels good to contribute. It really feels good to be able to contribute and actually be on the floor. And that that was my main guy today. I, I'm very happy for him that he got a career high in uh, any stat. So, and you got it in the win too, so even better. Definitely, yeah. I'm, I know. I know a lot of the Israeli fans that are watching are very excited for him to get a double double and a career high. You know, he's just getting an opportunity. He's not looking over his shoulder. You know, we had a we had a log jam at the forward spot before the trade deadline, so he has to worry. He has he doesn't have to worry about guys fighting for minutes, as former players have said. Um, so he just got out there to, and went out there and, and got to hoop and play, and not worry about you know being taken out. Took advantage of the opportunity. I thought he finished strong through contact. That's something we've been asking him to do. And he didn't miss. I didn't see him miss any wide open layups tonight. So I'm happy about that. He finished strong. He had a couple threes as well. And uh, he, he was a facilitator as well. You know, West Until Jr. looks like he's he's giving him an opportunity to just get the rebound and bring the ball up. So um, this is the time for it. There's only, what, 27, 26 games left. So just let the young guys play. Let them develop. I hate seeing Rui get hurt because, you know, Rui hit a three on the play that he got injured, you know, they called a flagrant foul on Bagley, which, you know, that's the rule. So um, I'm happy that they did call that. Um, Kuzma, once again, man, this guy is just he, – he's playing his butt off. He's really playing his butt off, 28 points. Um, but from a team standpoint, my main takeaways is um, I thought they they did a solid job defensively. They held the Pistons to 37% uh, field goal shooting. The Pistons are the worst – field goal uh, percentage shooting team in the league. And you can kind of see just the shots that they take. They, they force a lot of shots. And they're a young team. They take some bad shots. We take some bad shots, too. Um, and we're the worst three-point shooting team in the league. We shot 31% from the three. We're just terrible at shooting threes. Um, points in the paint, we have 48. 
they only had 32, so that's a great job from the Wizards. A big improvement from that Kings game. We didn't let you know guys penetrate to the basket too much, except for like Sadiq Bay a couple times and Jeremy Grant. Um, so I got a lot of Wizards fans got to see Jeremy Grant because you know he was in trade talk, so they got to see his game tonight. Um, but uh, otherwise, I thought it was a solid effort. It got a little sloppy at times. 15 turnovers tonight. Um, it did look like a development of game. Uh, that second quarter, we let them come back, and they went on a run. They went on a run in third quarter, too, and then Kuzma just went crazy in that third quarter mm-hmm. and had 17 points. So, overall, I was happy from what I saw, you know, just from a developmental standpoint. I thought Kispert played well. Uh, Rui played well. For the minutes he was there, Kyle Kuzma played pretty well. And um, we had five guys in double figures. All, all the starters were in double figures. Denny was in double. So, overall, we had six guys in double figures tonight. Yeah. Um this was this wasn't the most eventful game, I would say. Yeah. I think it was pretty, you know, it was a first crowd out there tonight, a lot of empty seats. Barely, yeah. Barely. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, was, it just seemed like, you know, it's the pistons and you know, yeah, nobody really wants to come out and see them. I think this was one of those games where, you know, the blood wasn't really pumping for me, but I'm glad they came out with a W, man. Um, Kyle Kuzma, like you said, in that third quarter, went crazy. You, you wanted to see him be a little more, bit more aggressive coming into that third quarter because in that first half, he you know wasn't as aggressive offensively, wasn't really attacking as much. But if these are the games you feel like you should win and you're like the number one option for the time being, these are the games where you need to kind of take over. And that's what Kyle Kuzma did in that third quarter against the Detroit Pistons team. And I guess he likes the Detroit Pistons. We've seen what he did when he was playing them in Detroit. And he almost, well, pretty much buried them in that third quarter. Definitely, yeah. Kuzma, yeah, he loves these. That's where he's from. He's from Michigan. Uh, so, yeah, that's what he, you know, he had the, like you said, he had that game winner against Detroit. And those are those are these are the games that he's he's played really really well. And I gotta I gotta give I have to give KCP his credit. I thought he played pretty mm-hmm. well. I thought he was a little out out of control sometimes, dribbling the ball a little too much. But he was four for six from the three, had sixteen points, um, had a couple of deflections, and I uh, didn't have any steals. But I thought he gave some effort defensively, like he always does. And uh, I thought he played pretty well. Denny was a plus 13 tonight in plus minus. So he's always, he's usually really, really good in the plus minus box. You know, of course, we always say people don't really care about it too much. But for some reason, Denny is usually really, really, really good in the plus minus. Uh, Kuzma was a plus 11. I said he had 28 points, but he had 23.7 boards and two assists. Uh, TB, I thought he provided some energy here and there. Um, finishing around the rim, had a nice dunk as well. Uh, he had a nice pump fake and then dunked it. Um, and Ish Smith, once again, he's, he's providing a difference. You know, he's pushing the pace. There's something different. You know, Dinwiddie was more of a slower point guard. I think when Ish did come in off the bench, it definitely helped, you know, got guys open for corner threes, gave guys easy buckets. We just needed to switch it up. And I think Ish Smith, you know, I didn't – looking at the trade from Trez for Vernon Carey and Ish and a second-round pick, on paper I looked at it, I was like, ugh. I'm looking at it now. I'm like, okay, I get it. I get why Tommy Shepard did it because, it's you know, Trez is an expiring deal. Ish can come in and push the pace. You know, point guard play is not the best right now, but we just need somebody who can, you know, put some pressure on the defense and can just get guys open. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Ish, Ish has been – I would say he's been good since he's came back in. That's kind of why I wanted Ish to come back. I just wanted to see a guard who can really push it and mm-hmm. bring some life to the offense in the transition game. And I think he's done that. I think he's played well defensively too. You know, obviously he's a smaller guy, so it's always going to be tougher for him defensively, but he's scrappy out there. And he has six assists. So Hmm. facilitating that thing, eight points, four for eight, 50% from the field, and chipped it with two boards. So little guy, but, you know, chipping in on the rebounds. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right, but before we do um, get to a little bit more about the game, we like I said, I want to talk about the uh, Porzingis comments about the Raptors. Uh, being close to acquiring him. And then we do want to talk about the remaining schedule a little bit, who we play. We, the Wizards do have the easiest remaining schedule. So, you know, kind of looking and uh, foreshadowing what we see to happen for the rest of the season. And, then, you know, a little bit of news about Porzingis and his injury status. Is he going to play before the All-Star game, before the All-Star break? The All- There's only two games left before the All-Star break. So before we get into that, 
This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. So the Super Bowl, me and Delonte, we were both correct. We did pick the Rams. I actually did predict 23-20. I don't know if I said that on the show yesterday. I predicted Odell Beckham to be the MVP, Super Bowl MVP, but unfortunately he got, he got hurt. If he didn't get hurt, I think he would have won the Super Bowl MVP, but it is what it is. Um, football might be over this season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops from all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fire coach is going to land. BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sporting betting, sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, UFC, sports odds, right to the Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Thanks for making Locked On Wizards your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. And um, a couple of players that did play well, I want to give them their recognition too. I thought Anthony Gill gave a couple mm-hmm. good minutes too. Yeah, um, some, um, good, a couple good offensive rebounds too. Right. Yeah, four in total. Mm-hmm. Yeah, four offensive boards, six rebounds. Um, Paul Neto came in and pro- provided some some energy, hit 11 points, and uh, three assists and four boards. So um, we played how many guys tonight? One, two, three, four. Played nine guys tonight. So when Porzingis comes back, you know, that's going to be 10. So the, the rotation is not going to be too much. So, they, so I'm happy that they consolidated. The guys that are not getting minutes, Isaiah Todd, Vernon Carey Jr., Cassius Winston, Joel, Ajay, Joel Ayayi, those are more – um G League guys. So yeah. Um, and, and also hmm. before uh before you go ahead, I mean the lineup could the rotation could go to you get a little smaller because we don't know how long rule you'll be out. We don't know how right. bad the sprain is. Right. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Um so yeah I do want to get to a article from Hoops Rumors. This is you know a rumor. Um it says before Dallas agreed to trade Kristaps Porzingis to Washington last Thursday, one report suggested that the Mavericks and Raptors may be having discussions about the big man. Michael Grange of Sportsnet.com and Mark Stein have since confirmed that Toronto had some interest in Porzingis. However, Grange says the Raptors never got close to making a deal for the former lottery pick, while league sources tell Mark Stein that Toronto stepped away from those discussions due to concerns about Kristaps Porzingis' long-term health. So, does this article kind of change your grade about the trade or does it make you a little bit more skeptical about Porzingis? I have seen there's a lot of, you know, new Mavericks fans who have commented on our latest videos talking about, you know, Porzingis kind of is a tease because, you know, he'll play a couple of good games and he gets injured. You won't really have a full um, sample size of Porzingis just because of the injury concern. You know, he is seven foot three. So, you know, a lot of taller guys you know, they're more susceptible to injuries because, you know, they're taller, they got longer, longer legs, feet, whatever, you know, kind of like Manu Bowl and whatnot. Um, so does this kind of change your perspective on your grade of the trade? Does it bring up any more concerns about Przingis? No. Uh, going into the trade, I knew what it was, and I, that's why I had tweeted when it happened. I said, regardless of how you feel about Porzingis, Tommy Shepard got off of the two worst contracts on the team. Mm-hmm. You know, so I knew the risk that came with it. That's why Porzingis went for Spencer Dinwiddie and Davies Bertans, even though people still looked at it scratching their heads. You got to look at the risk factor. You know, that's why the Mavericks couldn't get any, I mean, couldn't bring in something more because you you listed off how many games he's played in his career each season. You listed them. And is not the best looking, you know, stat. So that comes with the territory with KP. Everybody knows that. Nobody questions KP's talent. Nobody questions his talent. It's always been, can he actually stay on the court? Can he stay on the court? Because we know he has the talent. We know he's an extremely talented big man. But can he stay on the court? None of that matters if you aren't available to play. And that's always been the I mean issue. And the Mavericks fans, from what I've seen, they had issues with him because of that availability. You know, they always saying he, you know, he's hurt. He's rarely there, ever there. So, regardless, I knew about that when the trade happened. Like KP and injury history isn't a shock to anybody. 
who watches basketball. That's not a shock. Everybody knows he's always been a health risk. But, I mean, sometimes you got to take risks, man. And that's what Tommy's done. So hopefully he heals, you know, he can stay relatively healthy in his tenure with the Wizards. Right. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I would have traded those two guys, not to be disrespectful. I'm not going to say a bag of chips, but I just think moving on from those guys in general was a win. And especially you get a talented player like a Porzingis. If he's available, that's a great trade. He's a great player. He's an all-star caliber player. So just the potential the upside from Porzingis, what you can get, and we're the worst three-point shooting team in the league. He can raise that, even though he's not shooting well from the three, but he can just do something different, and he can protect the rim. So he just brings something different. And he just raises the talent level. He's somebody that we can give the ball in a post and uh, say, go get a bucket. We don't have a lot of guys like that on this roster or offensive scores right now, you know, other than consistent offensive scores, other than really Kyle Kuzma on the roster. So, you know, Porzingis, he's, he's definitely going to make this team better. Um, doesn't, does he move the needle? You know, not a hundred percent, but you know, we just, we need talent and he's going to be, he's, he's super, super talented. He can, very versatile and do a lot of things. So, yeah, I mean, like you said, it's always in the back of our mind. But, you know, we just got to hope hope that he's going to stay healthy. Um, this is news from Chase Hughes. He says, what's well, so a junior? Just talking about Porzingis' status, if he's going to play anytime soon. He says, what's well, so a junior says he hopes Chris S. Porzingis will be able to debut for the All-Star break. But he remains day-to-day with a right knee bone bruise. The Wizards have two games left until the All-Star break. So that's just an update on that um and then we're going to talk about the um strength of schedule and player of the game and then we'll probably wrap it up after that but we're going to get a quick word from the Alante. yes we are we do have a message from our friends over at built bar this is the time of year that i've pretty much given up on all my new year resolutions but not this year i'm sticking to my resolution to eat right thanks to built bar It almost feels like it's not really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating them. Have you tried the puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They're a treat and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors. Yummy cinnamony, churro, coconut, marshmallow, banana cream pie. So good. These are all going to be your new favorite. All Bill Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, puffs included. 100% real chocolate, low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bars with these. They are better. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. Go to built.com and scroll down to the macros chart. You'll be blown away. High protein, low calorie, high fiber, low carbs. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut, almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They are delicious, and new flavors are coming out all the time. If they think a flavor might be good, they'll make it. Um, The offer is going to build.com. Use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LIVE15 for 15% off at build.com. And we do want to get into the remaining schedule for the Wizards. So we have the easiest remaining schedule left in the NBA. Um, And we play the Pistons two more times. We play the Magic one more time. The Rockets one more time. They're a lot of routine. The Pacers are a lot of routine. We played them two more times. Play the Spurs one more time and the Blazers one more time. So all those teams are basically lottery teams. So we play a lot of a lottery teams. We're 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 kind of in the lottery as well. We're basically are in the lottery too. So we can't look at it like, oh, this team is you know easy team because they're looking at us the same way. So um, you know we gotta keep that in mind. You know a lot of people are thinking about you know lottery position and getting the best player available. And um, you gotta think about it this way too, developing the guys and still trying to win. You know, Porzingis comes back. You know. Ted Leonsis says, you know, we will never, ever tank. So there's just a lot of numerous directions you can go for the last couple of games of the season. Yeah. It's it's interesting because when I look at the schedule, you know, obviously Warriors, Bulls, Bucks, Cavs, mm-hmm. Mavericks, Celtics, those games, you know, you they may be able to snag one of those or two of those, 
you know, maybe from like the Celtics or maybe the Mavericks. They may mm. be able to snag one of those. But, you know, when you look at those teams, you kind of think L coming up. Mm. But you got the Pistons. You got the Pistons twice now, two more times. Uh, Magic once, Rockets once, Pacers twice, Spurs once, Blazers once. You know, Magic and Pistons, you should be able to get those. No guarantees, obviously. Rockets as well. Uh, once again, no guarantees. Pacers game will be tough. They got some nice young players over there with Duarte, Halliburton, Buddy Hill. I mean, Spurs, DeJounte Murray's playing out of his mind right now. They got Doug McDermott. They mm-hmm. got a lot of guys over there too, Keldon Johnson. And then you look at the Blazers, Yusuf Nurkic. He killed the Wizards last time they played. Simons, I mean, he's tearing it up over there in Portland. So it'll be tough. You know, there's no walk in the park to the plan for the Wizards. You know, I know that's where they want to go. But, you know, yes, they may have one of the easiest remaining schedules, but you still got to play and win the games. And how many times have we thought the Wizards should win the game and they haven't won the game? So it'll be interesting to see, you know, according to the numbers, is she, they they got it they got it pretty easy coming up, but you still got to play the game. Mm-hmm. All we know is that some way somehow the Wizards will end up with the ninth pick of the draft. That's yes. what they do every single year. But no, I mean it, it's a developmental time right now. They kept saying in the broadcast too. Let's see what Denny can do. Hopefully Rui comes back because you know he already missed forty games. So it's like you know to have a sprained ankle and him miss multiple games. This will be a rough third year because this is a this is. He's eligible for a contract extension. You know, you look at some of the guys last year. DeAndre Aiden was in, in the third year. He's going back and forth with the uh, Suns about getting a max deal. Luka Doncic is in his third year. He got a max extension. Rui's not going to get a max extension, but I'm just bringing up guys. You know, Mike Mikel Bridges. You look at his contract that he got. So this was this year is an important year for Rui contractually, and um, you know, unfortunately, he's missing a lot of games. Um, you know, some things were due to different reasons and now unfortunately we don't know how long he's going to be out with this sprained ankle so hopefully he can bounce back but um yeah let's get to player of the game here player of the game i'm going to go with denny uh, i like picking new guys guys we haven't talked about in a little while for mm-hmm. player of the game so i'm going to go with denny career high especially anytime somebody gets a career high out there um he was hooping you know and getting on those boards that's just another thing. With 15, that's a lot. You know, mm. he was out there playing hard, hustling, you know, 31 minutes, 30 plus minutes for Denny. I know that's what his fans want to see. And I like to see it too, especially in this type of season that, that is turning into 30 minutes. I, I love it. You know, continue to play him 30 minutes. If he's playing well on the boards, reward him with playing time. So Denny, I would say player of the game for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Um, shout out to the people watching from Israel. Yeah, he's playing hard. He's playing strong, finishing through contact, getting some strong rebounds in traffic, and I love to see it, shooting the ball well. Uh, he hit yeah, he hit one three, stepped in, shot it with confidence, four for nine from the field, so plus 13 tonight. So I want to see more. I want to see more. Maybe we can um, put him in the starting lineup, have him as a starting point guard that everybody wants him to be. You know, I know some of the ball handling is not there yet, but, hey, let's just experiment and do different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you never know. Um, and then if how Neto maybe comes down for injury or something like that, that may, God forbid, that may open up a spot for Denny to get some spot minutes, more minutes running that one position. You never know. I remember in the bubble, they had Troy Brown Jr. running at the one for some mm-hmm. time. They were just in there experimenting. But we'll see. You know, I wouldn't mind it at all. Then he get more of that experience, improving his ball handling. Only way you can really continue to improve is doing it in the game. You know, right. continue to do it in the game. Repetition. Mm-hmm. Yep. The next factor for me is Kuz. I mean, he took over in that third quarter, and uh, he was basically our closer, our finisher. 100%. X factor, Kyle Kuzma. That third quarter, 17 points, he took over, you know, and that's what we wanted to see from him. Definitely, yep. Yep. As you said earlier, the Wizards are tied for that uh, 10th spot, the last uh, playing spot with the Atlanta Hawks, so we'll see how it plays out. But we just want to thank you guys for listening. Make sure you guys now make your second listen locked on bets, your daily one stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on bets, hosted by your boy Q, with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling, is free and available wherever you get podcasts. So, got the Wizards dub, 
Yes, sir. Thank Duh. you again. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for listening. Make sure you guys sub up on YouTube. Hit the notification bell. Hail to the Wizards.